uh, we will we'll start to admit uh, all those participants who are joining in later. So just for your information, this training session will be recorded and then we upload it to our YouTube channel. So if for those who have missed it or you want to share with others, you can actually um, share our YouTube uh, link later on. We'll record and store in the YouTube. Okay. So uh, today we will actually be conducting the Novastar training and we'll be focusing on some of the products from Novastar. So uh, for the introduction of Novastar, we would like to invite Sarah uh, along with uh, some of her staff who have joined in uh, for this meeting as well. Uh, Sarah? Okay. I'm here. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah. I think someone already know me. Many thanks for your coming this uh, Lower Star training. Uh, in 2016, it was my first time to visit Singapore. Uh, I, met, I met a lot of Singapore friends. Really appreciate your always support to Lower Star. Here, I take this chance to, to introduce my colleague, Jackie. Uh, later, he will he will uh, in charge of Singapore market. Also, it's my honor to intro, to officially introduce my uh, distributor, Simply Con Connect. Uh, really thanks for them to prepare this training. Okay, I will pass my microphone to uh, General Manager Kumin from Simply Connect. Yeah, hi, uh, this is KM. Uh, thank you so much for joining our, uh, our regular Zoom training. Um, I think most of you may have heard, under, uh, understand Novastar. Uh, we have, uh, beginning this year, we have, uh, we have explored uh, more brands, uh, products uh, that we want to carry. And we have identified Novastar as uh, they are the top tier supplier of LED uh, controller uh, in the world. And because uh, in the past history, uh, I think most of you or SI have worked with closely with us that we have uh, done multiple projects with SI on a command center. Uh, and, and the trend that we are seeing now that command center are also moving towards the LED wall. Uh, and not only command center, also as uh, we have projects that in shopping mall, um, you know, that, that use LED wall for display. So we, we have few projects. The very first one that we had, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a video wall on a shopping mall is uh, Takashimaya. I think that was like six, six, seven years ago. And then another one is also one of a shopping mall and so on. So we see that uh, Novastar is, is, a, is a good fit into our total solutions, uh, especially in the LED wall. Yeah, so I think the trend now, you know, between LCD, LED, I think the market is still there, but LED, I think, is slowly coming out in the Singapore region. So that's why we, we want to start to market Novastar in Singapore and then work with uh, SI uh, for any potential LED wall uh, projects. So now I pass to Moose. Moose, I think most of you know him. Yeah, he will be... Uh, product in charge of Novastar for Singapore market at Simply Connect. So Moose, over to you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tan. Uh, okay, so uh, just for all those who have uh, joined, uh, we, we are actually the distributor for Novastar. So if you have any project inquiries or any uh, questions regarding uh, LED control system, you can actually write in to us. So uh, we will officially begin the training now since we have about 40 participants uh, in the training seminar. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what we'll be covering today, uh, actually, is uh, over here. Let me show you the agenda. So, we'll be covering the basics of displays. Um, then we'll just run through briefly on uh, the history of Novastar, and then we'd like to introduce uh, a few product range which Novastar carry. Uh, mostly, we'll be focusing on the all-in-one controller, and then the video splicing processor. After which we will actually show you some of the use case scenarios and applications. And then um, we will have a Deacon from uh, Novastar who actually take over at the last. He will run through with you some of the big deployments or case studies uh, which they have deployed. So at least you can have a rough idea of uh, where and how to use uh, Novastar products. Okay. 
Okay, so I think uh, many of you guys uh, have uh, should know by now there's many types of displays uh, available in the market. Uh, some of them being a projector or LCD screen. Okay, so how do you achieve bigger displays? So you can achieve bigger displays by either doing uh, edge blending or you can do a LCD video wall. Okay, so some customers, they have a requirement. Oh, I have this big shop front or I have a command center. I need to have a big screen. Uh, for my supervisor to oversee uh, the operators and all this. Yeah, so this is where when customer requirement come in, you need to uh, understand your requirement and then subsequently propose to them the solution. So right now, uh, as what Mr. Tan had highlighted earlier, uh, LED wall is trending. So the reason why LED wall is trending is because you can achieve bigger displays uh, with uh, zero borders or bezel. And then at the same time, you can have a very bright environment and you still can view the content on the screen. And then the market trend is also moving towards a finer pitch. So because of this, uh, the LED uh, display is very, uh, how to say, lucrative uh, for, for SIs and also customers. Okay. So um, to, to drive all this, you also require a hardware. And that is where Novasta actually comes in. Okay. So briefly, I've just um, put in some average LAM hours or uh, running time for the uh, respective uh, solutions. So if you go for projector edge blending, projector life hour is around 20,000 hours. And if you go for LCD video wall, uh, their life hour is around 50,000 hours. And then if you go for LED video wall, their life hour is around 100,000 hours. So in terms of um, like how to say uh, installation uh, to maintenance and your running cost, uh, LED wall is a, a, a bit more even though the investment in the upfront is higher, uh, your, your long-term uh, return of investment is actually better. So uh, now customer is uh, actually trending towards LED video wall in, in this aspect, okay? So we will be focusing on why Novasta comes into the picture because of LED video wall, you need the hardware to actually drive the displays. So that's where Novasta comes in. Okay, so these are some of the the, the images of uh, Novastar, where have they have been at. <laughs> so their tagline is actually fighting spirit. So you can see them, they have some deployment in outdoor and they have also some deployment uh, indoor as well. Okay, Novastar was actually founded in 2008. They have uh, around 1,100 employees. Uh, they're known for their customer service. And then they mainly focus on four business segments. So they have their LED control system, they have the LED calibration system. They have uh, normal switches, uh, video wall switches, and also splicers as well. And they also have the cloud-based platform. So this is more for like a signage application. Uh, okay. So they have a uh, roughly around 65% market share of um, all the, the, the LED uh, business in this worldwide. Okay. So in, the, in terms of their, their R&D team, you can see that uh, they have a lot of high flyers. They have a lot of people who are from uh, master. Uh, they have a lot of PhD holders. They have a lot of uh, bachelor degree holders as well. And then they also reinvest a lot of their money back into the, the R&D to develop more new products. Okay. So later I'll touch on um, from the beginning of their timeline till now, uh, because uh, they have R&D and customer feedback, they have actually developed uh, more products. Okay. So uh, along the way, if you have any questions, uh, you can actually put it down in the chat group and we address the questions later on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll proceed. So they also have a 36 branch officers. So they have uh, supporting all this market. So it's uh, Korea, US, Europe, uh, Russia. Uh, and then they also have a Middle East market as well. Okay. They also hold one of the highest uh, intellectual property ownership. So for LED industry, they own about 90% of the, the intellectual property. Yeah. Okay. So as I mentioned just now, they have uh, four types of business segments. Uh, we will be actually focusing only on this part. So this is the all-in-one video controller. And uh, we are we, focusing on the H-series as well. Yeah. So this is uh, some of the other systems that they have. They, they actually like a signage solution. Uh, if you want to deploy a one-time off solution. 
Okay, then they have a calibration system for calibrating the LED screens as well. And then they have uh, other devices for your uh, requirements, uh, be it live stage or it maybe it's a, a command center requirement. Okay. Okay. So without further ado, uh, we will actually proceed to all in one controllers. Okay. Uh, traditionally, um, this is how the LED uh, display is actually um, connected. So you have a video processor and then you have a source PC which actually pump in the video feed. And then the video processor will actually uh, send the content respective for the segments to the sending controller. Whereas from the sending controller, you go to the receiving card. So the receiving card, the hub board and the LED module is part of a LED cabinet. So one, one grid over here actually represents a cabinet. So the connection between the sending controller to the LED cabinet is a CAT6. Okay. So this is a traditional uh, LED connection diagram. So before we proceed to the all-in-one controller, we need to understand uh, the loading capacity because you might come across this term uh, actually very often if you are dealing with LED wall display. Okay, so the loading capacity is actually determining how much pixels the controller can actually drive. Okay, so the maximum usable bandwidth for each RJ45 or Ethernet port is around 93.6%. This is after deducting the overhead and other uh, data bits. Okay. So out of one gig, you have a 93.6%, which is usable, which is around 0.93 gig. Okay. So you take this bandwidth and then you can divide by the frame rate of the content that you're going to show and the color depth information that you're going to show. And that's where we derive the capacity. So this is a very important when you're designing the LED wall uh, because uh, you need to determine which controller to use. Uh, so uh, please take note of this. So for an example, we, let's say we use a, a standard uh, video source, which is running at 60 frames per second. And uh, its color information is 8-bit uh, for R, 8-bit for green, and 8-bit for blue. So you add, add up this together, you multiply by the frame rate, and then you divide by the bandwidth, you get the loading capacity. So the standard loading capacity is actually around 650,000 pixels. This is in pixels. Huh? Okay, so the, the pixel uh, capacity will actually drop depending on your frame rate and color information. So if you are doing HDR, which is 10-bit or 12-bit color, you need actually 16-bit uh, depth. So you, you multiply, you get 325,000 pixels. Okay. So actually, uh, as I mentioned, the calculation is actually referring to a standard video source, which is 8-bit color depth and 60 Hertz uh, frame rate. This is per port. Okay, you can see as the color color information increases, uh, your capacity will decrease, or if your frame rate decreases, your capacity will increase. Okay, so this is another product line which uh, actually um, uh, Novasta carries. We won't be covering this, but uh, just to give you uh, the understanding, because just now we are talking about traditional control system. So traditional control system is actually using a video processor, which actually send the content to the independent controller to actually send to the display. So you can see here, initially when Novasta began in 2008, they developed the product, which is an independent controller. And then like for deployment to have a screen uh, in 2011, they need a video processor to actually split the content to multiple controllers. And then uh, they need to, uh, from the from controller, they will send to the screen, okay? This is a 2011. So the Novastar have feedback from market and what the customers uh, require based on the requirement. They actually uh, build up the, 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 the control LED controllers. Okay. So that's where the all-in-one controller will actually come into play. So it can also uh, take note from 2011 to now, right? The pixel pitch size, LED pitch size keep decreasing. So right now in the market, I think the smallest is around like 0 0.9. So you need to take note of the, the pitch size as well. So it, it, because it, it ultimately, it, it depends on um, which controller to choose for your uh, customer's requirement. So uh, like for example, in 2017, 
if you want to deploy a 4K screen, they have a, a, a controller which actually can send the source to the controller and then to the LED screen. Okay. So that was a traditional traditional uh, LED uh, connection diagram. So now, as I mentioned, they have developed the all-in-one controllers. So you do not require the video processor. You do not require a separate sending controller. Instead, you only use one all-in-one controller. So the source will go into the all-in-one controller and at the same time, the sending card will send to the cabinet. So the cabinet which is having the receiving card Okay, so um, uh, what this does is actually actually uh, improve on two things. One is uh, the number of frames lost. So when you're going through two equipment, you have higher number of frames lost. Whereas you go through one equipment, you have lesser frame loss. And then you also save the problem if there's any issues, uh, you need to troubleshoot which is the, the, the product is causing the issue. So instead you only have one unit. Okay, so this is a product range from Novastar, which uh, is being carried right now, uh, which is uh, this uh, VX4SN, uh, VX1000, Novapro UHD Junior, VX6S, and VX16S. Uh, we will actually be focusing on the VX series uh, for this uh, training seminar. And then uh, you can also take note of the, the product code. The number behind indicates a certain uh, certain reason behind the number. So we will let you know what is the reason behind the number, okay? Okay, so the all-in-one controller was actually developed in 2014. So they initially had a NOAA Pro HD, and then now uh, it's being replaced by the VX4SN, and then all the other product range which actually uh, meet the customer's requirement, okay? So uh, for VX4SN, um, as I mentioned just now, the number indicates a certain, uh, a certain thing. So it actually indicates the number of outputs. So when you are referring to 4S, there's uh, four RJ45 outputs. And this is the sending card. So just now we mentioned uh, each port is capable of 650,000. So for this product, actually you notice, uh, if you can do the calculation, actually 650,000 times four, it's actually 2.6 million pixels, but you notice over here is actually only 2.3 million pixels. Okay, so the reason for this product is uh, because it's uh, based on a DVI. So the DVI, the maximum allowable pixel resolution is actually 2.3 million pixels. Okay. So uh, the, uh, the input for this is actually, uh, we have CVBS, VGA, we have a DVI which has an input and a loop out as well. And then they have a HDMI, DP, and SDI. Okay. And then this product also supports picture in picture. So if you have a small deployment, uh, which you, has this requirement that it requires a PIP, uh, then you can use this. Okay. This is a connection diagram. So you can have the input source plug in to the all in one controller. And then the RJ45 from the sending card goes to the cabinet. The cabinet contains the receiving card and then it is connected to the LED display. Okay, we move on to VX6S. As I mentioned, the number actually indicates the number of sending ports. So for this guy, we have six uh, RJ45 sending ports and then we have the following inputs, uh, SDI, HDMI, uh, DVI, DVI, and also USB playback as well for this product range. Okay. So this guy can actually support the full 6RJ45, which is 3.9 million pixels. Yeah. And VX6S onwards supports up to three layers. So you can actually have uh, three independent layers uh, showcased on the LED display. Also have a uh, preset. You can save presets and load the presets on the fly. And you also have transition effects for fading in and fading out. Okay, so here's the comparison between the 4S and the 6S. Okay, um, so if your requirement is, is a one-off, you just require to, to support 2.3 million pixels and customer also need a PIP feature, we recommend to use the VX 4S. Uh, but if your customer have other requirement, they want to have uh, three layers or more, 
uh, then we'll recommend different product range. So uh, for three layers, we will actually recommend VX6S. And if it can meet the pixel loading capacity of 3.9 million pixels, uh, this is a more economical solution. Okay. So uh, I think if you have um, visited Nova Star website, they recently launched the VX1000. So this one just came out, I think, a few months ago. Okay. So this is to also meet the customer's demand uh, because uh, the product range before the 6S to the, the next jump is actually a VX16S. So it's either six port or it's 16 port. So I think a customer had feedback to Novastar. Maybe they don't need the 16 port. Maybe the 10 port is enough. So Novastar R&D developed this product, which is a VX1000, and they just launched this recently. Uh, so for this guy, he has uh, also HDMI inputs. We have a DVI inputs, SDI. And this one, there's an optical fiber port as well. Uh, we will touch on this later. Why do you require an optical fiber port? Yeah, as for the output, they have 10 RJ45. So each, each port can support 650,000 pixels. Uh, so you, maximum you can support is around 6.5 million pixels. Okay. So yeah, so this is a connection diagram. So your input goes in and then you have the RJ45 sending, sending card sent out to the receiving card. Okay, they also have a fiber port for expansion or extension as well okay so it also support three layers and it also has a low frame uh, latency so as i mentioned because you replace two hardware with one hardware so you have a lesser frame latency as well okay also you can store preset and uh, just now as i mentioned they have optical fiber for long distance transmission so uh, how this comes into play is if let's say you have uh, two sites, uh, maybe it's an event, it's a live stage event or some event, you can have a video feed uh, uh, being shown on one LED wall, and then you, you can also transmit that one using the fiber, fiber from here all the way to another controller at another location for the event to show. So if let's say now, for example, like Olympics or you know, have a big stage event, they have uh, different, uh, different areas uh, you can actually broadcast the content from one location to another location. Okay, so that was uh, VX1000. That's the latest uh, product from uh, Novastar for the all one controller. Okay, so then they also have a VX16S. So if you have higher requirement, then it means you need a higher loading capacity. Uh, we have the VX16S. So this one can support up to 10.4 million pixels. And then they have the industrial standard inputs, which is a SDI, HDMI, and DVI. Okay. And the same, uh, same thing like uh, VX6S uh, and the VX1000 is also support uh, three layers. So you can have a PIP or you can have an overlay for your LED wall. So this is a connection diagram. So it's a very similar. So it's just a input goes, goes into the OE1 controller. And then from the OE1 controller, you can actually send the content to the LED screen through the sending card to the receiving card. Okay. And then they also have a preview uh, port as well. So if you want to have the preview, they have a loop, uh, loop out. So they call it a monitoring. So you can actually see the content which is actually broadcast on the screen. Okay. So if you guys got any questions or any uh, query, you can leave it in the chat group and then later we'll get back to it uh, when you have the Q&A session. Okay. Okay, so uh, next we will proceed to uh, the software. So this software is actually provided by Novastar for different application. So like, let's say for the configuration of the screen connection, they have the VCAN software. And then for like configuration of special screen shapes. So let, let's say you have like a triangular shape screen or a tree shape screen. Uh, they have the smart LCT. Then for like uh, configuration of the RCFGX files. Okay. So they have the Noah LCT mask. Okay. So uh, I think you can take note of this RCFGX file. This is uh, something which you maybe come across very often when you're handling with LED wall as well. Uh, this is a receiving card uh, parameter file. 
So this is actually stored on the receiving card side. So it, it, it handles all the parameters like a, a param, uh, like brightness, color, yeah, all these. So yeah, so all this software is supported by the VX6S, VX1000, and VX16S. So this is a brief comparison or overview of their product range we have covered earlier just now. Okay. So uh, we, actually, if you have any customer requirement or query, you can come to us. Uh, we will help you to do the sizing. So depending on your customer's requirement, so it, mainly you have to look out for the pixel loading capacity and also like the, how many layers they need. Uh, so this is something to look out for. Okay. So if, uh, if uh, everyone is okay, we will just still proceed. I think there's no question so far. Okay. Okay. So next we have the H series. H series is also launched recently by uh, Novastar. Uh, this is uh, also due to the fact that um, uh, a lot of customer requirement and uh, you know a lot of feedback. So Novastar found the, the there's a, a product gap, so they need to fulfill the product gap. So they come out with the H series. So H series is actually a modular uh, chassis based uh, system. Okay. So this is to bridge the gap because as I mentioned earlier, uh, from the initial starting stages of uh, LED displays up till now, the pitch has getting smaller and smaller. The screen size is getting bigger and bigger. And then the resolution or the loading is getting higher and higher. So a lot of uh, requirement from customer. So to, to handle this, uh, Novastar actually come out with a H-series. So we have a look at the traditional solution. So this is the traditional solution if you want to, um, to load the, the LED display, which is of this resolution, 15,360 by 6770. I think this is a big nightmare. So you need a, a, a splicer to send the video content to 40 controllers, which will then send out to the receiving card in the screen. So uh, I think after hearing customer feedback uh, and a lot of problems, so Novasta started developing on the H-series. So this is some of the, the, the connection uh, problems that you face. So I think if you step into the room with this pile of wire, like, oh my God, what, what, which wire belongs to which connection? So <laughs> it's actually a nightmare for the engineers at site. So if there's some problem or some issue, I think it will take a very long time to rectify. Okay, so yeah, so there's a lot of equipment, there's a lot of messy wiring, and the chances of uh, failure is very high. So yeah, so this is the traditional solution. As I mentioned, just to focus, too many equipment, a lot of connections. Uh, there are also some limitation on layers as well. So uh, this is something which you need to take note of. And you also face a video tearing issues. So because the content is uh, sent to uh, multiple equipment at uh, different spots. So when you join them up together, maybe you have a video tearing. Yeah. So this will also, also uh, relate to higher latency uh, resulting in poor visual experience. So if you're doing a live stage event, uh, imagine someone scored a goal already, then your, your screen is still not showing the goal being scored. So, <laughs> Yeah, so this is something you need to take note of. So to encounter or counter all these problems, uh, Novastar actually come out with a solution, which is the H-series. So if you can see, this now we cover the traditional solution and it can be replaced by one H-series. Okay. So H-series can do video splicing and also do the LED sending portion as well. So as I mentioned earlier, when you have multiple equipment, the frame rate is uh, frame rate dropping or loss, uh, losses of frame rate is higher. And when you have one equipment, it is lesser frame loss. Okay. So this is what happens. So this is the original one, which we are actually looking at just now. So when we swap to the H-series solution, you can see how neat the solution is. So you can, save time, save manpower, save cost, yeah. So this is uh, why H-series uh, will be recommended 
for bigger scale projects. Okay, so we cover the product range for H-series. So H-series, uh, they have a 2U, which is uh, represented by H2. So this is a 2U chassis. They have a H5, which is a 5U chassis. They have a H9, is a 9U chassis. And then they have a H15. And now they recently come out with a H15 Enhanced. So this is uh, something if you can have a look. This is a brief overview. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is a modular system. So you can have a certain number of uh, input slots and a certain number of output slots. Okay. So for the 2U, we can have uh, up to four input cards and um, uh, two output cards. And then for the biggest chassis that they have, the H15, they, uh, they can have uh, 30 input cards and 16 output cards. Okay, this is a cut. So later we cover what is a cut that is available by Nova Star. Okay, so they have a varying amount of cuts. Uh, so if you uh, notice here, they have SDI, they have DisplayPort, they have DVI, they have HDMI, they have VGA. They also have an IP input card as well. Okay, then for the output, uh, they have an Ethernet port. So this is the sending card. So it's going to your LED uh, wall. So you go to the receiver, uh, receiving card. So from here, you can go to the LED cabinet, which is actually uh, powering up your LED display. Okay, so um, they also have a fiber port. So in the event, you have another location. So maybe this is housed in a central location. You want to send the same video feed across to a different location. You can also use the fiber to transmit as well. And then they have a preview uh, port as well. So this is a HDMI. Okay, as I mentioned just now, loading capacity. So loading capacity is always uh, what you need to take care of, take note of. So uh, if you go, uh, yeah, so there's two numbers. So one is a 10.4 million and another one is a 13 million. So we'll come to that later. Uh, yeah, so because they have two uh, output cards, so the loading capacity is respective of those uh, output cards. So you can see here the maximum uh, width for one card is around uh, 10,240 pixels if you're going for the 16 port one, and if you're going for the 20 port one, it's around 10,752. Okay, so they also support multiple layers. Um, which is a requirement if you are uh, doing command center uh, yeah, or NOC, yes. So you support um, up to four 4K layers or eight 4K by 1K layers or 16 full HD layers, okay? It can store up, up to 2000 presets and also support seamless switching. So if uh, you all have worked with us before, you know what seamless switching is. So when you switch from one source to another source, there is actually no black screen or no blue screen. So it's a seamless. So uh, H, H series can support up to 65 million pixels. Uh, this is a loading capacity actually is based on the H15. Okay, so we've come to the input cards. So these are the input cards which is supported by the H series, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So we have a HDMI and DP combo card, and we have a SDI card. Um, yeah. And then we have HDMI 2.0 card as well. DVI, IP input card, VGA. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just to take note, uh, for HDMI 2.0, uh, because of the bandwidth uh, requirement, only H15 and H15 enhanced can support. Okay, yeah, so now we'll come to the output cards. So the output cards over here, as I mentioned just now, they have two types of output cards. So one is a 16 RJ45 and two fiber. So we recommend you to use this if you have a, a central system and then you wanna push to different sites within the same uh, location or building. Yeah, and then uh, we have a 20 output cards, uh, 20, uh, 20 port output as well. So this one, the loading capacity is 13, 13 million, and this one is 10.4 million respectively. And then they also have the preview card. So if you have a preview card, uh, you can actually see the preview of your input sources or what is being displayed on the LED wall from the uh, web GUI. 
So they have a web GUI for control. And if let's say you don't have a web GUI, you can also have a local preview monitor as well. Okay, so this is a solution diagram. So as I mentioned, you can have all your input sources go into the H series processor, and then you can have a control area where you can control what is being shown on which screen. And then you can have a preview uh, shown on the stage area. So if, let's say you are covering an event. So you have someone up on stage, uh, either like presenting or actually doing some performance, they can actually see a preview of what is being shown on the screen. Okay, so next uh, we'll come to the applications. So I hope so far everyone is uh, following me and you have uh, no questions because we don't have any questions in the chat group so far. <laughs> okay, so um, this is just a scenario for you to understand uh, or to have a clearer picture of when we will recommend a certain product range. Okay, so let's say it's an office foyer, it's a big MNC. They want to display corporate video. Uh, they want to do product launches. Uh, you can see here, this is a Google CEO. Okay. They want to do a director's pictures. Okay. So customer want to have a LED display uh, over here in the office for you. Okay. So uh, their requirement is the, their, their LED wall is a 5,000 mm by 2,000 mm. So they, this is the area that they have they want to show or use the screen for. So you need to consider a few things. You can see here, there's a large windows. So there's a lot of ambient lighting coming in. Uh, the lighting is also very bright. And then uh, another thing is the viewing distance. Okay. So um, uh, this is a rough uh, guideline for the viewing distance for LED display. Okay. So if you're standing at around three meters, uh, it's, a, it's a rough guideline to use at least a pitch size of a 3 mm. Okay, so uh, this is not a must, but this is just a general guideline uh, that you can actually follow if you are deploying for your project. So for our use case scenario right now, we gauge as around 3 meters is our viewing distance. So 3 meters onwards. So we use a pitch 3 for example, okay. Sorry, yeah, so maybe just to reiterate, so if you are standing far away, so for those LED wall which is mounted on like a building or outdoor application, you can use bigger pitch sizes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for our scenario, we'll be using pitch size of three. So this is a random supplier for LED display. Uh, we just got uh, some information from them. So if you're looking at their, their dimension, right? Uh, their cabinet is actually 960 by 960. So if you are using a pitch size of a tree, we can actually calculate the resolution uh, of uh, each cabinet. So each cabinet is a 320 by 320 uh, resolution. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so for, for just an easy reference, uh, a full HD is actually 1920 by 1080 pixels. Yeah. This is uh, if you want to achieve a full HD uh, screen. Okay, if a uh, HD screen, you need 1280 by 720 uh, pixels. Okay, for customer requirement, because they, they have this restriction, which is a five meter by two meter. So we need to find out the maximum amount of uh, LED cabinets we can fit into the uh, given requirement. So based on that, we can uh, come up with this, uh, which is if you use two cabinets in the vertical and uh, five cabinets in the horizontal, it's around 4.8 meters by 1.92 meters. So this can fit within the customer's requirement. At the same time, if we use pitch three, uh, the, the resolution is around 1600 by 640. So this is actually closer to full HD. Okay, yeah. So you remember the loading capacity we were discussing just now? So if uh, we were to use uh, this resolution or this LED display, it can calculate uh, 160 by 640 is 1.2 million pixels. So you can't use one port to fulfill this requirement. 
So you minimally at least need two ports. Okay. So uh, another requirement which a customer had was they need to do product launches and they also show directors um, footage as well. So they may need PIP as well. So if in this case, we will recommend the VX4S because VX4S supports the PIP and also can support the, the, the loading capacity for this requirement. So I hope you understand um, where the product category or product line falls under. So if you're still not very clear, you can still write to us later. Uh, we will uh, give you information on where you can actually uh, see for the, um, where you can actually come or write to us for more information, okay? Next, we have a board room. Okay, this one I'll just briefly run through. Uh, they have a video conferencing camera. They have some HDMI inputs on the table. Okay, and then they want to have a display. Then same thing as just now, they have a lot of ambient light and also have a lot of lighting. So we recommend to use LED display for this as well. So if uh, this one, maybe you need a requirement for PIP, then we recommend the VX4X onwards. Okay, then let's say if it's a live event, you have event stages, uh, you have multiple LED wall displayed across a different location. Uh, so what will you use? So this one we actually recommend to use, uh, depending on the loading capacity, you can use a VX16S or the H-series. Yeah. Okay, and our favorite command center. So uh, we do a lot of command center deployments and now we see the trend at, uh, as what Mr. Tan has mentioned, uh, a lot of command center is uh, going towards um, uh, LED displays. Okay, so let's say you have multiple LED display. So we will recommend to use H-series. Yeah. So H-series can support multiple layers and also support the, the, the large number of screens required. Okay, just to summarize um, what we have run through the whole training earlier on, uh, I've actually come to the end already. So just to summarize, uh, this is the type of uh, displays which um, we can actually propose for large scale screens. So we have projector edge blending, LCD video wall, LED video wall. Okay. So another consideration is the, the displays itself. So for projector edge blending, it's around 1,500 nits. So if you use this for outdoor, it's not recommended. Uh, so usually for outdoors, we actually recommend something like LED display. Yeah. So LED display for outdoor, you can still visibly see the content. Okay. So these are the considerations uh, that you need to take note of. Uh, so if you have any requirements or any questions regarding Novasta product, uh, you can actually uh, contact us. So now I'll pass my time over to Deacon from Novastar. So if you have any questions, you can either uh, direct it to him or you can also uh, leave it down in the chat group and then we'll follow up for you. Okay, uh, Deacon? Yeah, hi, this is Deacon from Novastar. Okay. All yours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have any question, please just feel free to tap it in the chat room and uh, I will just answer all the things that you asked. All right, in the meantime, uh, we're going to see this. All right, seems we have got no questions. This one the name there. All right. In the meantime, let's say the uh, the cases, real cases from uh, Noah Star. Let's say uh, our first uh, project and also our company's milestone. Uh, that's two o o eight Beijing Olympic Games, and they are using Noah Star system. And this is the picture of that screens. And for this kind of screen, uh, as you know, uh, Noah Star just founded at uh, 
2008. So this is the first generation of our product. So that's really the basic one. Yeah, just uh, let's say the next one, yeah, you will just check here and it's really a large screen. Yeah, it got 4,080 square meters. It's in Chengdu New Century Global Center. Uh, it's also in the uh, 2013. At that time, we still have uh, the basic controllers like uh, uh, only could, full, uh, could load full HD resolution. So we use lots of devices to do the cascading to handle this kind of huge screen. At that time, that will be the, um, the world number one largest screen. And uh, let's say the next case. Yeah, uh, for this, it's just uh, in 2016 Rio Olympic Games, uh, we support over uh, 20 stadium for the uh, for the games. So we just uh, use the uh, at that time we just uh, use M Control 660 VX4S and lots of basic controllers and all in one controller. At that time, uh, we have the multiple choices for those kind of games and uh, for kind of uh, for those kind of project all right let's say uh, you will just find uh, the shape of the screen uh, becoming special right because uh, we know start just a uh, arise lots of uh, special devices which could just uh, rotate the image on the screen, whatever angle you want to, to make it. Uh, for this kind of uh, project, we just uh, use the R5 Plus A8S receiving card. So you could just uh, uh, rotate the image, whatever you want. Then we could just uh, uh, do such a project here at the UMF. All right, let's say the uh, next case. Yeah, the 2018 World Cup Russia, we support the sta uh, stadium again, uh, just that uh, we use the uh, VX series to make it. All right, uh, you know, uh, in China, the most important uh, thing will be the Spring, Spring Festival Gala evening. Yes, so uh, we know us are also support that kind of thing uh, with our H series and also the 4K controller there. And it got really good effect and make the gala evening uh, works properly and uh, yeah, everyone enjoy it. All right, let's say this. Uh, also, uh, for this kind of string, you will see uh, the gather special shape here. And uh, you got this like a round screen and also some square, some different squares, squares here and also uh, some special effect. And uh, all the thing uh, we used with our H series, our H series over a uh, hundred uh, square meter special shape the screen and also the floor screen and the 700 uh, square meter lifting screen and the 2060 main screen so we all run this screen in one device in one device so that's all things uh, about the real cases made by Noah star and also uh for those things or for those cases or if you got any cases related to this thing or uh, it's just uh, similar to the cases I said, uh, you can just feel free to leave a question here and we will give the solution and also some advices.
Hey, thank you, Deacon. Uh, okay, so just to uh, follow up uh, with uh, Deacon's uh, uh, case studies, there was actually some deployments in Singapore also, So, but this one wasn't handled by us. So just to showcase some of the deployments, uh, they have a meeting room in Singapore, which was using a pitch 1.5 uh, LED screen. Uh, so this one is using a H2 to power up the screen. Okay, so you can see it supports the resolution of 2688 by 1080. And then they also have a demo room. Uh, this one also is using a H2. So this is the LED display using a pitch 1.8 at this resolution. So um, as I we mentioned that Singapore is also uh, starting to see uh, influx of uh, high uh, demand for LED wall. So we are actually uh, trying to uh, work with Novastar to propose uh, more solutions for the LED uh, demands and requirements. So if 